So this is going to be a new type of video. I've made a lot of videos about various things in Triple Triad, but I haven't actually played much. And so I'd like to change that here by, you know, playing some games and doing well or doing badly. Whatever happens, it should be fun. So what you can see on your screen, in the top left corner, you can see how I'm going to be drawing my randoms, which as I set up an Excel spreadsheet with every card, it draws five random numbers. Those lead to cards. And whenever I press a button, it, uh, it reloads the random and you'll see five new cards. And I'll do that and I'll check to make sure there's no repeats and then those will be the hands. So I'll say I'll draw another hand and this hand has no repeats. So it will be the red player's hand. Red will always be going first. And then I will draw again and it will be the blue player's hand. Looks like no repeats. And then the number below it, whichever number comes up as I draw the second hand, this two down here, that will determine whose turn it is, uh, which turn I am taking on in the first game. So I'm going to be second turn in the first game, and that's randomly going to say one or two. And then I can make this go away with my magical powers. In the top right, we have a timer. I'm going to be giving myself one minute per move. The AI will basically move instantly. This means it's effectively less time than a one minute game on TTA would be, because normally you'd be able to think during the opponent's time. I'm not going to be thinking during the opponent's time. Their move's going to be basically instant and I'm going to be paying attention to clicking the buttons to make this work because this isn't all automated yet. So I'm going to have a minute to make my moves, and that's definitely going to be a challenge. I think it should be fun, and I'm curious how well I can do on this time control because it is very short compared to what TTA offered, and it, I think it's going to have to be very instinctual. I'm not going to be able to calculate. Maybe I can talk about one, two ideas per move, but probably not more than that, not in that much depth. So it's going to be a limited capability to explore, and I'm going to be very reliant on my instincts. And this might mean I make mistakes, you know, even on like move seven or something, where I really should see something, but just don't have the time to just calculate through all the lines and make mistakes. And if so, I will be deeply ashamed. In the bottom right, you can see the current score of the match and who I'm playing against. So I'm going to be playing against Basic Bob, which is kind of the first AI idea I had. And then in later matches, I'm going to play against all kinds of different AIs, hopefully showing off that there's a real variety in both strength and style to the AIs here. And so I will start with Basic Bob and similar level AIs to Basic Bob, but to play very different ways. And then if I do well, I will move up to harder AI. If I play badly, I will move down to weaker AI. I may show off both harder and weaker anyway, just to show that whatever your strength level, hopefully when I come out with some playable version of this, there will be opponents that are interesting for you to play and worthy competitors, whatever your skill level may be, and at whatever time control. Uh, the starting rating is going to be 2000. I'm setting Basic Bob as the, uh, the default rating and making everything else around that. And I'll see if I can put up a result. I will adjust ratings between games. I won't do it exactly, but I can fix it between videos. And it'll give a sense of movement, and it gives a goal for me to work towards. If I can do really well against Basic Bob, I'll jump up and start playing, you know, 2050 rated opponents. If I do really badly, I'll drop down and start playing 1950 rated opponents. And we'll see. And I guess that's all there is to it. It takes me a bit between games to load up. I'm now going to start loading up the game, which you will soon see in the center of your screen. You won't see the loading screens because I spared you this, but it will take me a second between games to both draw the new randoms and for it to load up. You should be able to see it now. I have second turn, so I'm going to click AI move, and once it moves, I'm not really paying attention right now, I'm now going to click start and start thinking about my move. So against a corner starter, my first instinct is to look how can I address this, and I can take this lots of ways. With a three facing down, it's not really comboable. This three facing out actually is but I have multiple ways to take it, many of them with eights facing out, and they can combo the eights. So they actually can combo all my captures from here, but not necessarily from here. That means weirdly, despite it being a six, I am more oriented towards setting up against this side of it than setting up more against this one, because I already have a capture this way. Can I exploit their recaptures? Probably not. I also think I could look in the far corner. It looks like they don't address this very well. So this is not a card I really want to spend, but I think maybe it's worth it, just because it is safe and I don't have a lot of time. It is one of my few cards that doesn't have an 8 to the right, but having spent a lot of time and not had a better idea, I will go with this, and we'll see what happens. I bet they'll go in 2. They did not go in 2. 
but they still left three open, so if I take from two, I'm comboable. Though they did give up the card that combos that. So I could now take this, but they did set up a new capture in four. But at some point, it is worth noting, I now can take that. All right, did they set up against my play in nine? They did not. Do they have a directional weakness? They're generally, I probably should have looked for this on the first turn, but again, low time. Um, they're a little weak to the right, but it is hard for me to direct the game that way. If I made a move like this, it's a little tricky for them, but it's tricky for me too, because I don't have the recapture. So my instinct is just to take safety, but I was hoping I'd see better. I have not. We're low on time. Guess I'll go for it. And we'll play AI move. All right, curiously, they did not play 9289 in four, which I guess probably would have led me to have good moves in five. And I cannot take that, but I can play in four myself. My instinct is just to play something in like three. They did set up the combo in five, but all those cards have the same number facing out from that central card, the seven facing seven and eight facing eight. So they're never comboing multiple things and their captures in four and five depend on the same card. So whichever square they use it on, it will not be available for the other. And I also notice that if they go in 4 and I go in 5 with an 8 to the right, their 9848 eight cannot capture anything in 6, and their 9289 nine can only capture one card in 6. So this looks promising to me, and I'm going to play it. And they are going to go in 5, and... I should be able to just play either card in six. Uh, just making sure I'm not doing something completely brain dead. And we win the first game 6-4. Uh, very happy with this result. I don't think I did anything too fancy this game, but a lot of games, you know, nothing too exciting will happen. And I win the first game, I gain about 16 points for beating someone the same rating as you. So we take a 1-0 lead. And I won on second turn, and I do think Basic Bob is a better first turn player. So while this game didn't show off anything complicated, I am pleased with how I played it, and a lot of wins don't. And yeah, so I closed that window. I don't know if it closes for you as well. It seems like it did. Sometimes it seems to, sometimes it doesn't. And we're going to draw new randoms. I think it's going to be a... I'm going to try to do maybe three game matches. That way the video doesn't drag on and on. And it can be a nice quick viewing experience. Uh, but if we're tied after three games, I'll probably go up to five or so. Maybe I should keep an even number. Yeah, maybe we'll do an even number. So maybe I'll play four games. Haven't super worked this out. Uh, we'll see how I'm feeling after, after three if I want to run away or keep going. So we have a new lead up. I didn't check who is first and second turn. All right, I will have first turn this time. So let's just start the clock. And I am red. So I have Vivi. So luckily they have that covered. This corner they also have covered. This corner they have covered. A lot of, a lot of corner coverage on their hand. Okay, interesting. What's their directional weaknesses? They have a 9 up, an A right, an A down, and an A left. But if they lose that A left, they have a big wet left weakness. My hand's very good going left. Not so good going up. Hmm. So if I go something like here, I can combo their only capture from 8. So just, even though they're not going to take this turn, just having that as something difficult for them later might prove some kind of advantage for me, just something that's a little difficult for them to deal with. And I love my weak corners. So they're playing on the left side of the board, which strikes me as they're gonna run out of cards that have any leftward power, right? Because their only recapture on that is five, six, seven, A, which is also their only capture in eight. So I wish I could take that with something other than this, so it would have more than a four out, because this, this could be vulnerable to other recaptures from them and I really want to force the 5, 6, 7, A out of their hand. Well, if I block with something else, they could play another card in two. So, they did give up power against this. That was, uh, but they have the 9, 8, 8, 4 as well. Um, so I'm probably just gonna block the in-between square. 
not entirely sure with which card to do so. Uh, I guess I'll do here. And I'm low on time, so i got to make a move. I'm a big fan of blocking the in-between square in these structures, but I do wish I had been able to force a key card out of their hand. Now, their 567A in either 5 or 8 is comboable back by my 75A6, depending on which square it goes, in different response squares. Um, but if it goes in 8 and I combo back in 9, they do have um, the plus in 5. Maybe I should just block 5. Do I want to take and be more forcing? No, I don't think so. This gives them the big combo though, mm, so maybe not. So maybe just, mm, no, what am I doing? What are we doing? All right, I'm gonna take stuff because they have eights and sevens down and so my seven, five, a six can dominate on the right row. And my idea here was to play this card here when anything they play in two, I can combo, and the five, six, seven, a, and nine, I can combo. Sorry, anything they play in um, six, I can combo, and their better card in eight, I can combo, and I can overpower the other one. So this looks like a win to me. And I thought, I didn't have time to say the calculation, but this looked and still looks winning. Seven, five, a, six really played well here. Yeah. And we win the second game. Nice. Uh, very surprised by this result. I did record a, uh, or not record, but I did do a practice video just to make sure that, or not a video, but like just playing while trying to talk and saying what my moves were so I wouldn't, like trying to explain what I was thinking so I wouldn't be just totally incompetent at this on my first try. So I did practice and I played five practice games for Basic Bob and I won the match three to two. So I was not expecting a 2-0 start. Basic Bob is a worthy, good opponent. And uh, I'm showing you propaganda pretending I'm good at this game. Because uh, this, is not, this is not how the previous match went. Uh, so game number three, we'll draw a random. That looks all unique, so that'll be the red hand. And we'll draw another hand. And we have a two, so I'm going to be playing second turn this time. And that can go away. And we'll boot up the game again. Sorry for the downtime. Uh, nothing I can do about that at this point. And eventually we'll have better graphics too. This is all going to look very nice and I think be really cool. And was I first or second turn? Already forgot. Second turn. Okay. We're going to press AI move. And start the clock. Looks like I have a Rhinoa and Tella Fusaya. That's unpleasant. Alright, so first thing I look at is how do I address their starter. I can take it two ways, but both way they combo back. That's ugly. Um, do they have directional weaknesses? They have all these eights up and eights down and nothing else. So they're better side to side. So I might want to direct the game up down. I seem to have a bunch more power up down. Um, something like this I could see playing out well, but I could also see playing out terribly. But it does make the game a little more up down. And I really do want that. Should I keep the card with the 2 up or the 4 up? The 4 could play off their card. They have last turn, so it's probably more likely to help them. But the 4 means I can overpower from below with that if I want to. I think I'm going to get rid of the 4 up. I'm going to try to be fancy and do the uh, the less obvious version, and I'm sure it's the worst move. Uh, so I'll press, press AI move. Right, and they block their starter in. And my move looks kind of silly. I do have safety now, though, right? They had to do that. They had to give me safety in seven. So I could play something there. And likely will. Probably this one if I was going to, because I want to keep threats in five. If I take in five, I probably force eight, six, eight, six out of their hand, but they could also just set up and play in one. They don't have to play in seven immediately. So I think I should probably take the safety. The downside is my hand is becoming a lot less good up down. And my a693 is not great against their eights up and down. It's only good if it goes in one or three, not the others. I don't like this position at all, but I'm gonna take safety. 
and they do go in five. All right, so we gotta avoid panicking. They still don't have a threat on my card. So one thing I could do is write something like this. Ooh, I could play something here. Hmm. No, it would have to be on the other side. Something here. And if they take me, and they have to take by overpowering in three, I can combo back from one. So they're gonna, it's gonna be five, five. They're gonna go up six, four. I will combo back three things. I'll go up seven, three. They'll take two things at the end, I think. So I think they can't take it. But they can just, hmm, five, five, six, four, five, five. I think it loses to three, eight, seven, eight, and six. Oh, no, I'm out of time, I'm out of time. What can we do? All right, I made a move. I think it's terrible. Definitely was terrible. Uh, yeah, just a terrible move. All right, so I should start the clock, but uh, panicked. I don't know if there was a save there. I, uh, I didn't find it. I spent too long on an idea that didn't work, and uh, I'm left with this easy loss in panic. But if we go back a sec, my idea was... Uh, geez, what was it? My idea was to go here, but I think the problem is, I'll reset the clock, is if they take it, I was hoping this worked. Oh, sorry, if they take it this way, um, I was hoping this worked. Oh, and it does. Why does it work? What was I missing? Did I just count wrong? I just counted wrong. Oh, sorry, yeah, no, this was the line I saw. Yeah, no, I counted that one correctly, but then, as I said, they could play 3A7-8 here, and the 8 6 8 6 is a capture at the end, because I, yeah. So, not sure this was a tie here. Not going to spend too long on this. Uh, the match is now 2-1. So, I won the second game, which should bring my rating up something like 15 and a half points. And then I lose the third, and that's going to be losing slightly over 17 points. We'll say I go down to 2014, and I'm up 2-1. to one. We've had no ties. So, I think that game was tricky from the start. I don't love my move in 7, I don't love my move in 2, and my final move was just a disaster. So, we lose game 3. It's always good to, good to lose a game somewhere, though. Not, not for any, like, real reasons, but for, like, dumb psychological reasons that, you know, once you've lost to someone, you no longer feel as much future shame when you lose to them. This might not make sense to anyone, but if you've never lost to someone, it can be really um, scary to play them because you know anytime you lose to them, you're risking like your ego in a larger way. Well, once you've lost to someone, it's no longer such an ego-based thing. And it can be nice to have your ego let go. So I'm going to have second turn this time. And we'll boot up the game. So it's 2-1. We will make it a four-game match. I think an even number of games is good. And... Uh, uh, did not play well that last one, so we'll click AI move. You can't see me click that, but I like to say it so you know it's thinking. And we'll start the clock. So, how do I address their starter? I can take it here, they can combo back. I can take it here, they can combo back. So basically not at all. Um, can I set up any combos? No, no setups in five. So again, gonna have to play distant. My hand looks really up down, so I might set, end up in, yeah, far a far corner a far side move again um usually i think you just want to use up the card that has like the least power facing their starter which is a kind of weird principle like to chuck this i could also actually just play this here totally didn't consider whether i have safety anywhere um they can take but if they do so they kind of open themselves up to a lot and give up all their rightward power. All right, I'm going to try this. I was thinking to go in two, but now this looked like something where I could start trying to build out. Um, so if I take that, they retake in seven, and then I can take that with something in four, and I have all these eights facing up that they're not actually good at dealing with. That looks promising to me. I know it's very vulnerable to, like, cues, 
but they don't have an obvious move in three or in seven. They might have something in one. They probably have something in one. But, oh, it's risky, because that one move is very scary. They don't even have a great set up there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. I'm going to try to get rid of, try to set up this wall of eights going upwards if they go in seven. Right, they did go in seven. So I shouldn't do it that way. I should do it this way. I did give up a lot of left to right power, but I never had much left to right power. So actually I don't particularly have less now. So if we go here and go up 6-4, um, and they play in 1, they lose because of A8, 7, 3, and 2. If they play in 2, they don't set up against 6, so I can just play anything in 1, and they go 3, and I win. And if they go in 3, I can take it with A8, 7, 3. Yeah, I think this is just a win. All right, they went in two, uh, so clearly didn't think they had anything, and I will take it, and they take back. Nice. All right, so weird no-tie first match. So that's very interesting. Uh, final score, three to one me. Um, I gain, say, 15 and a half points for my final game. I'll round up to 2030, be nice to myself, and uh, come out of this with a one-minute rating of 2030. And in the next video, I will have a different opponent. And I'll probably record that now because I'm kind of enthused to keep playing. Uh, I do think Basic Bob's a good player. I think I did better in this than I expected to do. Like, I'm definitely not a 75% performer against this opponent. But I did lose a game showing Basic Bob his teeth. And I think you can see from the games that Basic Bob, you know, played reasonable moves, right? Even in this one where it was kind of a mess. They played, you know, a very strong start-looking starter in 9. When I went in 6, they blocked it in an 8. Very natural thing to do. When I went in 5, they went in 7, recapturing their card in 8 and locking that in. And then it just happened to be a loss at the end because the calculation wasn't deep enough and not enough understanding of the difficulty with dealing with my upward numbers, my 8s facing up. But I think this is the kind of game a good player could lose. And... I'm very pleased with how these AI are coming out, and I hope I hope you found these games interesting. I hope I didn't play too badly. I hope that third game was a tough position and I didn't blow it from nothing. And I'll see you in the next video when I'll have a new matchup.